Les Paul was another visionary, not just a musician. He was constantly pushing the envelope of innovation, of sound. At the time, he was one of the most well-known and successful musicians. And we get him to start working with us into what ultimately becomes his endorsed solid body electric guitar in 1952, the first Les Paul gold top electric guitar, solid body electric guitar. When we receive guitars from the rough mill, the first stop is the neckline. We'll first install the headstock overlay or veneer that has the Gibson logo on many models. Sometimes they're blank if we're gonna do a silk screen logo like on more affordable guitars. And then they go to the first CNC machining operation here. The CNC machine has two tables that move independently of one another. So they each hold 10 necks. We install 10 of the same model necks on each table key in the appropriate program, and then it machines that final neck shape a lot closer to the final shape that we all feel. After that, we then glue the fingerboard to the neck blank. It's basically a table type affair that holds 10 necks in each station. We hit a valve and we use fire hose, which inflates and conforms to the back of the neck. So it's very quick and very uniform pressure to hold that fingerboard to the neck. So there's no hot spots or potential for that fingerboard to have uneven pressure. So it's a great smooth surface. So after the final CNC neck machining operation and the fingerboard is glued on, they have to get the final hand roll. The final neck shape is done by hand. We can't do that that close on a CNC machine. So you have to have skilled people do that final hand roll. The hand rollers, again, are very, very skilled craftsmen that take months to learn that craft. They have to not only make that neck feel good, but it has to be dimensional. We have a lot of different models that have different neck thicknesses and neck shapes. So they have their calipers that they'll have to verify the necks are dimensionally sound. They have different shapes, whether it's the C or a D, 50s round or a 60s slim taper. So they have to make sure that not only does it feel good, but dimensionally everything is to blueprint spec. So we, we like to say CNC machines make great guitar parts, but people make great guitars. After the necks are hand rolled and inspected, we then scan the neck at that station and we print out the tag that will then also accompany the guitar, which has the SKU for that model, as well as the serial number. So our serial number system, this year we went back to the Julian date instead of sequential. The first and fifth digit of that serial number indicate the year that the guitar was made. The second through fourth digits are the day of the year in which that guitar was made. So now you can actually date the guitar off of that serial number. And then the final three digits will correspond with the sequence of how many guitars were made that day. And then we also use a separate Arbor Press and press Made in USA. So what we have here is the 1952 Ledger. The Ledger is the book where we recorded every single guitar that shipped out of the factory. Normally what you see in the ledger is the date, what is it that was shipped out of the factory, and then whether it had a serial number or a part number. We don't start serializing guitars until later in 1953. So in the 1952 ledger, what we have is the guitar, who it went to, and the part number of the case normally. And this is a very important year, and therefore a very important ledger, because this one carries on May 20th of 1952, the entry for the first Les Paul that ever ships out of the factory. And it's two of them. So it says two Les Paul, Les Paul, and the part number of the case. That means two Les Pauls shipped to Les Paul, and then it has the part number of the case. 
On the top of our headstock, we have our signature Gibson open book pattern. It's sometimes called the open book. Sometimes people will call it the mustache because it kind of has that mustache shape. The guitar neck prior to that is just kind of paddle shape. The headstock veneer is glued on and we install it in a fixture and we have a shaper cutter and the blades are shaped to that open book or mustache shape. So in one pass, that will machine that shape into the top end of that headstock. Les was an innovator, and he was not happy with just being a consumer of music and of sounds. He wanted to innovate and create sounds. He wanted to create ways of recording sound. And I find that that resonates with a lot of our younger audiences that not only want to consume content, they actually want to create it. And I think that the legacy and the spirit of whether it's Orville or Ted McCarty or Les Paul himself, I think that still lives in this building. It lives in what we're doing, in all of our processes. And I really hope that when they look down on what we're doing and they look at us, that they're really proud.